Hi there and welcome to this video on uninstalling Omniverse Launcher. This video tutorial will take you through the steps to do that. As you know, on October 1st, Launcher will become officially depreciated. And this guide is helping people get off Launcher and onto our new NGC and GitHub workflow. Okay, so let's start off in a familiar place. I'm running um, Omniverse Launcher on Windows. I currently have one app installed, the old Composer. And today we're going to follow the official guide published here on the Uninstall and Launcher guide on, published on our documentation page. So the first thing we want to do following the guide is to download what we call the Omniverse Launcher Cleanup Tool. This is a great little utility that actually cleans up a lot of the files left behind by Launcher. I'm running on Windows today, so we're going to go ahead and do the Windows version. And we can just go and open that. Great. Once we have it loaded, we're going to leave it in place. Go back to our guide. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is we want to close Omniverse Launcher. That makes sense. So we're going to close that down. Now, some of you may not know this, but this is a really important step. Sometimes Omniverse Launcher is already running in the background in what we call our system tray. So it's actually very important to right click here and actually hit exit. So again, it's not just enough to close it down with the X in the corner. You actually want to go to your system tray and make sure it's fully closed. Okay, so with the launcher officially closed, we can go back to the uh, cleanup tool and we can go ahead and run the launcher cleanup utility. Now, an important step here is we don't have to actually uninstall the apps individually from Launcher. So if you have Isaac Sim or Composer, they don't need to be uninstalled. They can just be left where they are. I'm going to uninstall the whole lot. So we're going to hit yes on the prompt. And then yes, again, we have a follow up warning about that. But it does warn you that this will remove everything from Nucleus and everything from Launcher. Okay, it says it's done and we've uninstalled Launcher through the cleanup tool. So we can go ahead and close that down now. Go to the control panel and we're going to uninstall Launcher from here. And make sure that we can find it here as well. Okay, so that's now both uninstalled in the cleanup tool and uninstalled in the official Windows add and remove programs. The final thing we want to do is re reboot our computer. Now I'm not going to reboot it because I'm doing the video, but what we are going to do is look at particularly these folders that we can remove manually. So it lists them out here and it's really mostly focus on the, some of the files that may have still been left behind. It's important to check that these are fully removed. The launcher cleanup tool should help and also just uninstalling it. But if any of these files left behind, it is a good idea to make sure these are manually purged. The main ones we have are the Omniverse folder in our local folder and also some of the documents left behind in kit. So let's go ahead and uninstall these folders manually. I'm going to click here, go to my C drive, go to my users, go to find my user folder. Go into app data, go into local, and here it is, the Omniverse folder. So this is one of the first folders we can go ahead and delete. So let's go ahead and delete that. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we also have the Omniverse launcher folder uninstalled. There's actually two of those. One is the Omniverse launcher update folder. And then the other one is in our roaming folder over here, where it says Omniverse Launcher. And then finally, it's also anything that's still residing in our main kit folder. So that can be found on documents and kit. Delete 
and also it would be documents Omniverse if it was still here. Okay, so that's basically covered uninstalling launcher for the Windows system. Today we're starting off in our GitHub page, which is github.com slash nvidia dash omniverse slash kit app template. Okay, so let's look at the two methods to get started here. The first is probably the easiest for people that aren't familiar with a lot of coding. You simply go to this green button and you can download the zip file directly to your desktop. So let's go ahead and do that as method one. And there it is, it's a very small download. It's only 314 kilobytes. Let's go ahead and open that location. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to extract it. And I could just copy the whole folder, but I'm actually gonna just copy the code. And what I've done is I've actually prepared a folder already here called the cat. And I've got two folders, method one and method two. So let's go ahead and paste this into method one. This is just gonna show you that there's two ways of doing this and either one is perfectly satisfactory. Great, so we have method one ready to go. The other way we could do this is we can actually just scroll down the page and go to our quick start guide, which I advise you to do on either method. And we can get the, what we call the git clone command. So we can take this and there's a convenient button here, which just actually copies this to your clipboard. And this is gonna become very useful in a moment. I'm gonna to return to my Windows command panel here. And what I've done, I've already created the folder of cat off my C root. Then I've created two folders, method one and method two. So right now we're in the method two folder. And I simply paste that command directly in to the command line. Now this is important, wherever you paste this command is where it starts to download that repo. So don't run the command unless you're already in the folder you wish to download to. Okay, so there it goes. It should be very, very quick. Again, it's the same 314K. The difference is rather than downloading a zip file, it's just downloading the files directly. Great, okay. So that just shows you the two ways to download it. Now let's go ahead and actually start to build this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the guide over just so we have that as a reference. So in the next part of the guide, we just change to the correct directory and I'm going to just run the cd hit app template command here. That gets me into the subfolder, perfect. The next part of the guide is to then run what we call the template command. Now, all of these guides are published both for Windows and for Linux. I'm on Windows today, so we're gonna stick with the Windows method. So I'm just gonna again grab this copy That's gonna create a new template. The first thing we want to do is accept the EULA and we're gonna accept that great. And we want a building application. So we're gonna also click on application. And I recommend that we install application two, which is the USD composer. We can cover the other templates in another video, but for now we'll stick with the composer. The next thing it asks you to do is create a title. So we're just gonna call this Richard app. You don't have to, but you can. And the display name can be Richard app. And we'll make it version 0.1, it's fine. It also asks you if you want to create a, a, a required um, setup extension. So in this case, we're just going to return and accept. And the final question asks you if you want to set up an application layer. Now we're gonna cover that separately in another video, but the application layer essentially is if you wanted to do streaming on top of this and run it headless. In this case, we're gonna say no. And that's it. We should now go ahead and build the template. So again, we can do repo.bat build. And as you can see that everything is starting to run from the repo.bat. And that's gonna go ahead and actually start building that template we just made.
Excellent. So now the template has been made and been built. And the final thing we do is just launch it. Now, the first time it launches the template, it may take a little longer than usual. It may take up to about a minute or two because it has to create a lot of the initial code, initial shaders. Once it's launched, it should start up in about 20 seconds. Okay, great. The template is now built and ready to use. In the final part of the video, let's look at upgrading your Kit 105 extension into the new Kit 108. It's actually fairly simple. On the left hand side, we have folder one, which is the Kit 105 extension area. On the right hand side, we have Kit 108 extension area. I'm just going to drag the extension I need over from one to the other. And then I can now reference this extension directly in my kit file. Of course, there's been a lot of changes from kit 105 to kit 108. So when you grade your extension, you may run into some errors. And I've posted a link to the migration guide. And you can see some of the examples here.